Sea of Thieves has had a colossal number of updates in the past six years, but two main updates have stood out for being the definitive PvP updates for the game. While many updates have added to or changed the PvP aspect of the game, the two major ones were Arena as part of the anniversary update and Hourglass, the main feature of Season 8. We're going to judge these updates based on their gameplay, rewards and legacy to determine which is the definitive PvP update in Sea of Thieves. Starting with personal biases, since it's important to get that out of the way, I have been playing since 2017 so have experienced almost every update, but I didn't really get into Arena until Rare announced its closure in Spring 2022. With that being said, let's get into it. For those unaware, Arena was an aspect of Sea of Thieves' largest update, the Anniversary Update, that released in April 2019. We won't be including anything non-arena focused, so no tall tales, no fishing and no expanded ship damage. Arena saw 5 ships battle it out in a sectioned off area of the map, with players competing to score the most silver. Players earned silver for damaging other ships, killing players, digging up the chests and delivering them, crews lost silver if they sunk. All crews got the same maps and had multiple chests across several islands, with the idea that combat would be forced into different areas. The chests had to be delivered to floating wrecks to score more silver, so once again players were concentrated into certain areas. Each match would see players start with set supplies and each respawn would refresh your supplies. Arena was changed in Arena 2.0, with only one chest being present at a time with an added purple beacon, meaning players could see where the chest was at all times. Matches were also shortened. The lobbies only included sloop and galleons, so brigantines weren't available. Crews would wait in the Sea Dog Tavern, where they could socialise with one another, check out the shops, and call each other slurs for entertainment, since it would take 20 minutes to start a match. Yes, Rare did eventually turn off the voice comms and text chat in Arena due to the massive proportion of reports that came in from it. This happened in Season 1 in January 2021. Hourglass is different and a much simpler game mode. It's 1v1 and the winner is the last ship standing. You win by a ship sinking or being driven out of the zone. Sloops, brigs and galleons are available with matchmaking based on crew size, not ship size. Supplies are not set, allowing players to stockpile supplies before they matchmake. Matchmaking occurs in the underwater tunnels and players dive out of the water facing each other at the start of the fight. But which is better? They both have pros and cons. Arena's biggest benefit is that, and brace yourself for this, is a more casual game mode for three reasons. It had no skill based matchmaking at all, it had more ships per match meaning you could third party or avoid combat entirely, and lastly the chest enabled people to win just by digging it up and running. But these things don't automatically make it worse. The multi ship fights were a good part of the appeal since it replicated or was meant to replicate the adventure pvp, although that's only when all crews were somewhat competent. The set supplies were also a massive boon, since you could just hop in and play, no need to gather supplies or worry about the opponent having cursed cannonballs or even something like a cannon rowboat. I'm also giving bonus points to Arena for having the tavern. Despite the obvious issues with comms, it's still a much cooler place to hang out. And the hourglass matchmaking is pretty bad since the skill based matchmaking gets thrown out of the window in order to find a new match. However, Hourglass is still the better game mode. This is simply by way of its simplicity. Look how long it took me to explain each mode in order for you to understand them. Hourglass also has aspects of 1v1 fights and prevents crews from winning just by running. The fights are more difficult and can be more intense with the match focused on just around fighting a single crew. The downside is the potential for cursed cannibals and supply differences which can often lead to a cheap victory or a frustrating defeat. Arena also had issues with farming, where ships with less skilled players would be targeted and their ships kept afloat in order to farm silver. This was even worse on the Galleon, as you could just shoot top deck hulls to infinitely farm points. Arena matches also had the potential for the lobby to be spoiled by TDMers, people who just wanted to fight each other on forts instead of engaging in the arena. Well, there is nothing wrong with playing like this, it could ruin lobbies as those spots were taken up by those TDMing. This could lead to easy wins and 15 to 20 minutes of delivering chests with no challenge. So for me, round 1 is going to Hourglass based on pure gameplay alone. It has less issues overall when it comes to being a PvP mode. In our next round, we'll go over the progression and rewards of each update. 
Arena introduced a new company, the Sea Dogs, which was progressed exclusively for Arena with its own set of commendations. This went all the way up to 50 and had a new complete set associated with it, the Sea Dog set. The clothing and weapon set was awesome and are some of the nicest cosmetics in the game, part of that being that there was a somewhat decent challenge in unlocking them. For example, the weapons will be earned for getting 200 kills of each weapon. There were several titles available for completing certain commendations too. Rare even added a recolor set in Seabound Soul in November 2019, which was a blue and silver variant of the set. This set was even nicer and required even more time spent in Arena to achieve it. Once again, they added Athena's Fortune commendations for winning 240 matches as Pirate Legends, earning you the legendary Sea Dog title and weapons. This was essentially the extent of the rewards, with reputation only earned when finishing a match and gold too, scaling with your position on the leaderboard. Hourglass is very different. It introduced two new factions, the Guardians of Fortune and the Servants of the Flame, representing the Pirate Lord and Captain Flameheart respectively. Each faction progresses through winning matches, selling emissary flags won in those matches, or lowering your hourglass whilst holding loot or a high streak. The wins award more reputation if you have a higher win streak. Each faction is progressed individually and go all the way up to 9,999, with awards spaced around certain milestones. Speaking of milestones, both factions have captaincy milestones that award trinkets, ship crests, titles, ship banners, furniture, and captain's logs. Each faction has a figurehead with five variants awarded from levels 20 to 100. Level 100 unlocks a new curse, the ghost curse for the guardians, and the skeleton curse for the servants. Both of these curses are accompanied by access to hideouts and very awesome cutscenes. These, for me, are the best parts of achieving level 100. Both curses have also been massively requested since launch, so bonus points there. After that, servants can earn parts to customise their skeleton, but cannot use regular clothing or vanity items, making it quite limiting. Seven variants are available of heads, torsos, legs and bone colours. The golden bones are earned at level 1000. The guardians can earn the mysterious stranger set, which is a recoloured ferryman set, the recoloured guardian ghost set, and the magpie's wing ship set. They can also get the Legendary Curse from Season 1 at level 105 and the Golden Ghost Curse at level 1000. Both also have unique titles for levels 10 to 100, 1000 and 10,000. Even though the Servants have a duplicated title, Disciple of the Flame, which is shared with the Reaper's Bones. As much as I like the Sea Dog stuff, I'm going to have to hand it to Hourglass again. Due to having two of the most requested curses, long term progression and access to new areas of the map. Anyone who's experienced the cutscenes should also agree. Lastly, we're going to be judging the legacy of each update. Arena and its removal, despite the issues we've mentioned, is often cited as the reason why Sea of Thieves is dead or dying. The reasons are obviously based on nostalgia and it releasing at a really special time for the game's life, despite only 3% of the playtime being spent in the arena as a whole and leading to its removal. Despite its issues, Arena spawned a subculture in the community, like it or not. It did create a competitive community who were very upset to see it go. I do emphasise with its removal, but don't agree its removal has been that impactful on the wider player base. Hourglass? Well, with Hourglass we're living through its legacy. And the biggest part of Hourglass's legacy, at least in my opinion, is the massive cheating issue that we're still not out of yet. This is an issue that is still going on even though it has improved. Hourglass has not seen any updates to cosmetic in over 18 months either, and probably never will, with subsequent awards being tied with the Reaper's Bones, and Athena's Fortune hasn't got anything on top of that. Hourglass also sees very little support just like Arena, with bugs taking months to fix. Moreover, the gameplay loop and matchmaking are a point of frustration, with many new or less skilled players throwing themselves into it in the hope of obtaining their curses. It feels like the rewards are being held behind the game mode to force people to play it. I don't think that personally, but many people do. I personally love Hourglass, but I cannot award it the point for having a better legacy, since it's definitely on the same track as Arena in terms of support, with rare radio silent on any future updates or tweaks. I do think it is more popular due to the rewards and simplicity, but concessions would have to be made for the health of the game mode. This point goes to the arena. I'm awarding Hourglass as the best of the two updates based on rewards and gameplay, with both being a fair bit better than its competitor, despite there being issues with both game modes. Does Rare need to bring the arena back, or is it best left dead and buried? 
which update is the better PvP update in your opinion? One final thing, I recently became a Secret Lab affiliate. I absolutely love their products and their chair has essentially saved my back. They're an amazing company and if you'd like to pick something up, use my affiliate links below. It goes a long way to support the channel and content like this. Thanks again for watching.